Hi, this is Chris, Chapman the Cat Motor Legends. Today I'm going to talk through a selection of what we think are the best adventure jackets for the coming season, the coming season of 2023. Now, my inspiration for this review, so to speak, came from a comparison of adventure jackets that I read recently in a magazine. I have to say I'm not a great fan of product reviews that are done in magazines because largely journalists simply don't know enough about gear and how it works. They don't usually ride in the gear that they're testing and they don't get the kind of feedback that people like us get from the hundreds of customers who buy gear and then report back to us on their findings. There's also, it has to be said, a fundamental conflict of interest that prevents a magazine ever being critical about a product. And that's because no magazine is ever going to write a review that might upset a current or potential advertiser, which is why such reviews tend to be pretty bland and actually say nothing. Indeed, in the review that I'm talking about, nearly all the jackets came from the magazine's current or past advertisers. And it was perhaps because of this that all the jackets that they reviewed magically got four or five stars. None of the jackets was found to be wanting, even though a number couldn't even be considered to be adventure jackets at all. Some might suggest that we too have a conflict of interest because let's face it, we sell the stuff. Well, in theory, yes, but in practice, no, we don't think so. We call it the way we see it. If we don't think much of an aspect to a product, we will highlight that and we will explain why. And we feel we can do this because we sell lots of different products. So if we highlight a particular problem with a product, that doesn't put everyone off. And some customers will go, well, that's not particularly significant to us. They will still buy the product. Some other people will look at it and go, yes, that is a weakness. I don't want a jacket that does that or doesn't do this. And they will go and buy another product, hopefully from us, because by that point, they've come to trust our judgment. Rest assured, however, that our reviews do ruffle a lot of feathers. We are often contacted by aggrieved manufacturers, but our response invariably is that if we don't highlight such issues, who on earth will? And so our view is that we're actually performing a useful service for the manufacturers. It's a view, I've got to say, that they don't always accept. Suffice it to say that our reviews are just that. As ever in life, there are no rights and wrongs. There are just shades of opinions but our opinions are based on a considerable amount of experience and a good deal of knowledge. And of course, on the constant feedback that we get from the kinds of customers who use this gear in anger in the way that it was intended to be used. We don't just look at a garment, look at the spec and form an opinion based on that. Our reviews are always based on some form of evidence. That doesn't mean, of course, that we always get it right. Well, not all the time anyway. Let me start by saying what I normally say when I'm doing reviews like this. We don't do all of the brands out there. Some people will be disappointed, some will be simply outraged that their favorite jacket is not included in this review. Well, we can't do every brand, but we take this business seriously and we do kind of think that we've selected the best gear from the best brands. After all, that's what Motor Legends is all about. And so if there's a brand that we have not selected, if there's a brand that we don't sell, well, maybe there's a reason for it. I want to get another monkey off my back and it's about adventure jackets. What exactly is an adventure jacket? And it's an important question because most so-called adventure jackets are not proper adventure jackets at all in our view. A real adventure jacket will not have an attached membrane, be it a laminated membrane or a drop liner membrane. A proper adventure jacket will have a removable membrane. And that's because if you're somewhere hot or working hard off-road on the bike, the last thing you want close to the body is a membrane. A membrane is going to make it harder to sweat. And we need to sweat when we're working hard or when we're somewhere hot because sweating is the body's natural way of cooling itself down. Sweat comes to the surface, turns from a liquid into a gas, and it's that heat exchange that pulls heat out of the body, what's known as evaporative cooling. If you've got a membrane close to your body, you will not cool down as effectively. The membrane will also serve to insulate the heat that you are creating, so it will make you hotter and a membrane will stop the cooler, the cooler oncoming air from reaching your body to help you cool down. Adventure jackets with membranes, of course, are going to look the part. Think, by the way, we're talking here about jackets that have laminated membranes, because it's only if the membrane is laminated to the outer shell that you're going to get any kind of direct to body airflow. Anyway, Adventure jackets with laminated membranes are going to look the part. They're going to look right on an adventure bike. They're going to sit long. Rarely are they all black in color. You'll have lots of vents and lots of pockets. But the truth is that these jackets, these laminated adventure style jackets are really just 
touring jackets in the adventure style. And this shouldn't surprise us because the reality is that most adventure bikes these days are just touring bikes with knobbly tyres and long travel suspension. Very few are the GSs that end up going off the black stuff. These jackets, of course, still are fantastic. And if you want to go touring somewhere where it's reasonably hot, but there may be some rain and you don't want to stop and have to put a waterproof on, then a laminated adventure style jacket may be exactly what you need. And so in this review, we're going to make a distinction between jackets with no membrane or rather with a membrane that can be removed or where the membrane isn't fixed to the chassis and laminated jackets where the membrane clearly cannot be removed. Of course, there are still out there some adventure jackets with drop liner membranes, but I have to say that these jackets are really just slightly cynical exercises in styling. They may, again, look the part, but they're not going to be up to anything extreme because if it rains hard, they're going to soak the water in, they're going to wet out, and if you do go somewhere hot, the venting is not going to be good enough to allow you to really cool down. Anyway, we hope you enjoy watching our review of what we are calling the top 10 adventure jackets. Apparently we have to call it that because that is the title that's going to rank well for us on Google or YouTube. The truth is we can't really say that we're featuring the 10 best adventure jackets on the market, but I have to tell you, we have another little secret. Our top 10 jackets actually includes 11 jackets. Just don't tell anybody. According to the Moto Legends definition, the Sunny Jacket is basically a touring jacket in the guise of an adventure jacket. It's a two-layer laminated garment and it uses Halvarsen's Dryway Plus membrane. It's a well-proven membrane. The jacket is comfortable and easy to wear. You've got high art panels for extra abrasion resistance here on the shoulders and on the elbows. In terms of protection also, you've got level one armor in the shoulders and the elbows. You've got a pocket for a back protector. It doesn't come as standard. You've got all the usual stuff. So you've got the big kind of pockets here that you would expect of an adventure jacket. You've got adjusters here on the sleeves. You've got an adjustable belt at the waist because as we keep saying, we like on a longer jacket to have an adjustable waist. Lots of reflective detailing, a detachable collar, vents here on the chest. You've got vents, zip the vents that run all the way upside the inside of the arms. And you've got an exhaust vent under a storm flap across the back. You also get a removable thermal liner that is infused with a material called Innerborn. Innerborn is a hollow form fibre, a little bit like Primaloft or Thinsulo. And so this is a jacket that you could happily go touring in, although perhaps not anywhere that is too hot. And it would be more than up to the job of commuting on an adventure bike. At just £470, I think the Sunny represents pretty good value. Comes in different colours and has a matching pant. In some colours only, the matching pant also comes in a short leg. Overall, it's a good jacket, and for most people it will be more than up to the job. But as an adventure jacket, it's not outstanding. In truth, the Explore R jacket from Rucker is the jacket that epitomizes the touring and commuting jacket that is configured to look like an adventure jacket. The outer shell is a three-layer Gore-Tex Pro Shell construction. It simply doesn't get any more waterproof than that. For protection, you've got Rucker's super large D3O armor throughout. So, and it's level two armor, by the way. You've got that in the shoulders, you've got that in the elbows, you've got a back protector, and you've got two chest protectors that sit either side of the main zip. Here on the shoulders and the elbows, you've got an added layer of Cordura 500, sorry, 1500 for extra abrasion resistance. Here under the arms, you've got a stretch material for comfort. You've also got concertina banding behind the shoulders. Again, the same thing, just to make this jacket a little bit easier to wear on the bike. At the bottom of the sleeves, you've got GTX cuffs to stop the rain getting into your gloves. You've also got here a neck collar that can be concealed in a zip compartment behind the neck. You've got these adjusters on the arms, so one at the top and one at the bottom. Lots of adventure looking pockets here and here. Got 3M reflective material all over, so this is a jacket that you're going to be easily seen in. You don't get a thermal liner with the jacket, but that's an easy thing to acquire afterwards. You've got an attachment zip that runs around the hem of the jacket to enable you to zip this into any rucker pant. You've got, as you would expect of a jacket that purports to be an adventure jacket, you've still got lots of venting. So you've got these vents that run up and down the chest. You've got vents at the forearms. You've got vents at the back of the arms. You've got a couple of vents that run 
couple of exhaust vents that run at the back of the jacket. And also, as you get with most rocket jackets, you've got a full length zip that runs up and down the flanks. And that's where rocket reckons that a lot of air can come into the jacket. So even if you're on a GS with a big screen, the air comes down the side of you. So they reckon these vents that run up the side are particularly effective. Overall, I think this is the adventure jacket for the GS rider who wants an adventure look, but who is not prepared to have any compromise in terms of, for example, water ingress. This is a jacket that you could ride throughout the winter in. I'll bet I would say, maybe not in this color, but the jacket does come in all black. It's a jacket for somebody who wants to go touring, but never wants to stop to put a waterproof on. But by the same token, if you're looking for an adventure jacket that you can ride across the desert in, forget it. If you wore this jacket in somewhere really hot, somewhere really hot in temperatures 30 degrees plus, you're going to absolutely boil. The truth is that this is a three season jacket and the three seasons that are applicable to this jacket are the autumn, the winter and the spring. I cannot see in any version of the world where you'd want to wear this jacket through the summer. So in our book, this is not really an adventure jacket. As a rocket jacket, it's obviously expensive. The jacket is 1,330 pounds, I think it is, without the thermal. So you'd be wanting to add, say, an extra 200 pounds for the, the Downex thermal liner if you wanted to stay warm in the winter, plus maybe another grand for the pants. Overall, this is a meaty option, but this is a jacket. It's a suit that is gonna to be totally reliable. And of course, you're gonna benefit from Rucker's six-year warranty. According to the definitions that we have created, the Carlsbad would probably not be considered to be a proper adventure jacket because it has a waterproof membrane. And of course it does have a waterproof membrane. It's got a two layer laminated Gore-Tex membrane. But by no definition could the Carlsbad ever be deemed to be a touring jacket. It fits baggy and loose, so it wears like an off-road jacket. And because of that, that, the jacket just won't work as well on the road. In the rain, the rain is gonna come up underneath the jacket. And so in our view, the Carlsbad probably represents a very nice balance between a jacket that you could go touring in and an adventure jacket that you could do more adventurous riding in. Obviously, it's got a membrane. The membrane is going to keep you dry in heavy rain, but the membrane, of course, is still going to impede the venting. It's going to stop air coming in into the jacket. And it's also going to slow down the process of sweating, which is what we need to cool down. However, the jacket is, as you might expect of, of Klim, pretty well vented. You've got large vents here. This also is a large vent here. You've got vents on the arms. You've got two large vents at the back of the jacket. The baggy fit will also make the Carlsbad a very good jacket to wear off-road because when you're riding off-road, you want to be able to move around. You don't want a jacket that's too tight, that's got too much of a touring fit. So the Carlsbad is going to work well off-road. It's lightweight, of course, and it's also totally unlined. For protection, you get level two D3O in the shoulders and the elbows and as standard in the back. You also get swathes of a material called Armacore, which is basically Kevlar woven in with Cordura. You get Armacore on the shoulders and on the elbows. The Carlsbad is the best selling laminated jacket in the Klim range. Now, a lot of people would assume that that jacket was going to be the Badlands. And the Badlands is the jacket that we tend to think about when we're talking about Klim. It's their signature piece. But we simply cannot envisage any adventure where you'd be better off wearing the Badlands than you would be in the Carlsbad. We think the Carlsbad is far more appropriate to adventure riding. There's one other thing that we should bear in mind. The Carlsbad has a fairly traditional, baggy, loose American fit. So one of the advantages of this jacket over some other jackets is that if you're somebody who does have a bit of a tummy, the Carlsbad can often accommodate that quite easily. Now at 179, no, not 179, it's not that cheap. At 790 pounds, the Carlsbad is somewhat less expensive than the Badlands. And given the fact that Klim has a technically an unlimited warranty, although don't take that too seriously, one could even say that the 790 pounds represents pretty good value. The Moira, the Halvarsas Moira, has a removable inner waterproof jacket. So in our world, that means that this is a proper adventure jacket. In fact, the removable waterproof liner also incorporates an element of Outlast. Outlast is a temperature regulating membrane. And I think Halvarsas have done this because they take the view that if it's raining, there's a chance that you're also gonna get cold. So why not incorporate the thermal with the membrane? It seems to make sense to us. 
The membrane, however, on this jacket cannot be worn on the outside. You can only wear it on the inside, and that means that in heavy rain, this is a jacket that might well wet out. The membrane, of course, is Helvarsson's famous Dryway Plus membrane that they've used for years across all of their garments. It's totally reliable. On the outside, you've got these two large flat pockets, very adventure looking. Behind the sleeves and in the shoulders, you've got stretch panels. You've got, sorry, they're not stretch panels as such, they're concertina bands that are gonna make the jacket just a little bit more comfortable. Nice touches like reflective panels here on the front of the jacket. You've got level two armor in the elbows and the shoulders. You've got a pocket for a back protector, but the back protector does not come as standard. You've got an elasticated adjuster system on the waist. Not only can you use that for expanding and contracting the volume in the jacket, but you can use it for moving the adjuster up or down to get a really nice cinched fit. Now, you'll often find on jackets an, a volume adjuster system also on the arms. And the idea is that in the summer, you might want to cinch down the volume in the sleeves so that sleeves don't flap about. But in the winter, when you're wearing layers underneath, you might want more vol volume in the arms. What we've got here on the Moira is a really clever adjust the system, a wind wire system, and it works out really well. Here on the Chester jacket, you've got four long zips. The inner two zips are also pockets, but if they've got nothing in the pockets, they will act as vents. You've got super long, a super long zip that runs here all the way up the inside of the sleeve. At the back of the jacket, you've got a permanently ex open exhaust vent, but that's under a storm flap, but it's so far up underneath the storm flap that water's never gonna get in there. You've got a full length zip that runs around the hem of the jacket. That means that you can zip this into any Helvarsons pant or indeed into any Rucker pant. At the neck, you've got a removable storm color. The Mora is pretty much what you'd expect from Helvarsons. It's a competent, well-designed and well-constructed jacket. It's not perhaps class leading in any particular respect, but it will do what it says on the tin, like everything that you buy from the Swedish brand. Now, we often talk about Halvarsson's representing 80% of perhaps Rucker's quality for 50% of Rucker's money. And I think that the Mora is a demonstration of that. At £640, it is not inexpensive, but you get a lot for your money and you know that you're going to be getting something that you can totally rely on. The Carese Evo from Held, in our view, is probably the best proper adventure jacket on the market. The level of de detail that it incorporates is simply amazing. The outer chassis is a lightweight Cordura 500, but in an adventure jacket, you don't want heavy materials. The jacket is lined with a Coolmax mesh liner. For waterproofing, you've got a removable liner, as you would expect, but here in the Crazy Evo, it's a Gore-Tex three-layer lined jacket. The interesting thing about that lining is that it contains stretch, so you can wear it outside the jacket or inside. So for example, if you found yourself in up to an hour's rain, you would leave it on the inside. But if you then found yourself in a situation where you were gonna be on the motorway for many hours in really heavy rain, you would take the jacket, you'd put it on the outside of the jacket, and then this would never wet out. You've got Gore-Tex stretch panels that run up the flanks and under the arms. You've got more pockets on this jacket than you're ever gonna need. You've got these flat pockets here, you've got a large rear pocket, you've got a phone pocket, you've got a power bank pocket, you've got lots and lots of pockets, as I've said, more than you need. Also, you get lots of venting. Our favorite vents are these here, the front pockets, they've got zips down the sides, you undo those zips, you roll the flap down, and then you've got two large vents here on the chest. You've got vents here that run up and down the arms, you've got a, an exhaust vent that runs at the back of the sleeve. Behind the jacket, you've got two vertical vents, one on either side, and then you've got another zipped vent that runs across the back. Here we have both front and back, what are known as permanently open ribbon vents, and they just allow a little bit more air into the jacket. If you find yourself somewhere particularly hot, you then take the storm flap and you, it holds back with magnets. And then the placket that runs up and down the center zip is also mesh, so that's gonna allow more air to come in. In terms of protection, the Crazy Evo comes with D3O armor, a standard, as you would expect, in the shoulders and the elbows. It doesn't come as standard in the back. In the most vulnerable areas, so on the shoulders and the elbows, you've got areas of a material called ripstock. It's a super strong fabric. And then over that, there's an overlay of super fabric, which is the most abrasion resistant material you can use on a motorcycle garment. You've got an adjuster system here on the waist, which, as you know, we like on an adventure jacket. We've then got adjusters here at the top of the arms and at the bottom of the arms. Lots of reflective material all over. 
basically the detailing on this jacket beggars belief. It also comes interestingly in a wider range of sizes than most jackets. So you've got the regular fit, but you've then got a slim fit. And for those who've got a bit of a tummy, they have what is called a tummy fit. This truly is the prince of adventure riding jackets. At 835 pounds, it's certainly not cheap, but you will not find a better adventure jacket however much you pay. In our view, the best jacket for wearing on an adventure doesn't even look like an adventure jacket. It's the Klim Marrakesh, and we think it's just the best motorcycle jacket ever produced. With its thousand denier Cordura shell that's infused with stretch, it's the most comfortable bike jacket you're ever gonna wear. And I don't care whereabouts you are in the world, whatever adventure you're on, comfort is always gonna be a consideration. The jacket looks and wears like a fleece, but it rates AA under EN17092, so there are simply no compromises in terms of protection and safety. Basically, it's a mesh style jacket, but a mesh jacket on steroids perhaps. It flows air through every single panel, but when you layer properly, you put the Zephyr windproof underneath, you then put the Maverick down jacket underneath and put the Scott over the top. Then with those three components, in addition to the Marrakesh, you can ride anywhere in any climate and always have the perfect jacket. Whatever adventure you're going on, I can't think that there is gonna be a better jacket to be wearing. If I were to set off tomorrow on a trip around the world, this is what I would wear. But then again, I suppose I wear this when I go to the shops, I wear it when I go into work, I'd wear it if I went on a trip to Scotland. The problem for some people when looking at adventure jackets is they won't like the fact that it does not look like an adventure jacket. But once you've got over that kind of emotional hurdle, you'll be sold because there's no jacket that's quite like it. Now, there is a new jacket, a new Marrakesh jacket that is being released for 2023. It comes with a few additional extras. It's got a drawstring here around the waist, and that's important because Klim doesn't produce this jacket in enough sizes. So sometimes you end up having a jacket that's a little bit larger than you want, but with the drawstring, you can overcome that a little bit. The new jacket also comes with D3O ghost armor rather than traditional D3O. The old jacket was never uncomfortable, but with the new ghost armor, I'm imagining it's gonna be even more comfortable. Now at 450 pounds, the jacket isn't exactly cheap, but we don't think it's expensive either. Yes, you'll need those extras, you'll need the Maverick, you will need the Zephyr and you'll need the Scott, but this is a system that's gonna give you the ultimate in versatility. And even when you bought all those items, we think that this setup is gonna give you good value. For us, the perfect complement, just whilst we're on the subject, the perfect complement to the Marrakesh would be a pair of, say, Roka jeans that are gonna give you a similar degree of versatility. They flow air, they're not waterproof. You're gonna to have to put waterproofs over the top of them, but you take a Marrakesh and a pair of jeans and really, you can go anywhere. The only thing that we would do if we were setting off around the world, I'd probably take the D3O Ghost Armor that it comes with. I would upgrade that to level two. I'd probably do the same with the back protector. The Trek R represents Rucker's attempt to produce what we are calling a proper adventure jacket. And it's a great one, albeit done in a way, you know, somewhat OTT Ruckaway, I suppose. The outer chassis of the jacket is a Cordura 500 denier material with reinforcements here on the shoulder and on the elbows of a 1500 denier Cordura. Waterproofing comes courtesy of a three layer Gore-Tex liner, a removable liner jacket. But importantly, as with the held Carizi Evo, the waterproof jacket can be worn on the inside if you're in a shower or in really heavy rain, you can put it on the outside so that the jacket doesn't wet out. I think this is probably the best vented rucker jacket we've ever come across. Here on the chest, we've got four vents. The inner two can be used here as pockets, but they are also vents. We've got two vents here on the shoulders. We've got a couple of vents here at the waist, just above the waist. We've got long zips that come all the way down. In fact, there are two zips, an upper one or a lower one, but basically you get venting all the way up the sleeves. You also get two zips in the back as exhaust vents. You get, as you would expect with Rocky, you get all the regular stuff. So you've got level two D D3O throughout. And of course it's Rucker's extra large D3O armor. You've got large pockets, these two large pockets here and an enormous map pocket across the back of the jacket. You've got adjusters on the arms. You've got a stretchy 
waist belt. We always like a stretchy waist belt. Things like neoprene in the collar, lots of reflective detailing, connecting zip to enable you to connect this to a rucker pant and so on and so forth. The Trek R, I think, is Rucker's most credible adventure jacket to date. And in some ways, it's very similar to the Held Craze Evo. I think in the margin, we might still prefer the Held Craze Evo. The Held jacket is lighter and perhaps a little bit easier to wear. It's even better vented because it's got those huge pockets that also turn into vents. It's probably even better vented than the Rucker. And it's got, in some ways, some slightly nicer detailing. The Held jacket also comes in a much wider range of sizes with long versions and what are known as tummy versions. The Rucker jacket is 200 pounds more expensive than the Held, but I suppose it's got to be said that Rucker has a little bit more kudos, a little bit more credibility. And of course, with Rucker, you get a slightly longer warranty. You get six years as opposed to the Held's five. One would have thought that a jacket designed specifically for Charlie and Ewan's long way up adventure would be fit for purpose, but I'm afraid this jacket just isn't. Now, don't misunderstand me. The long way up jacket, as it's known, is a veritable work of art. In fact, we had a fairly significant hand in the design of the jacket. We didn't design the physical components. That was all down to, or the surface design, that was all down to Bellstaff. But when they were looking at creating the jacket, Bellstaff came down to see us in Guildford and we showed them all the best jackets on the market. So jackets from Rucker, from Klim, from Stadler, from Halvarsons, and we pointed out the best features in each and the things that they might want to incorporate. We later, when the prototypes were ready, they showed us the prototypes and we made some further amendments. Now, the jacket has almost everything that you could ever want. So waterproofing comes courtesy of a three-layer Gore-Tex Pro Shell construction. It just doesn't get better than that. We've got four vents here on the chest. We've got in and out vents on the arms, so an incoming vent and then an exhaust vent. You've got vents in the shoulders. You've got large vents in the back. It's a pretty well-vented jacket. For protection, you've got super fabric here on the shoulders and on the elbows. And as we all know, super fabric is one of the most abrasion resistant materials you can use in motorcycle clothing. You've got adjusters here. You've got an adjustment system at the waist and we really like that, particularly on a longer jacket. You've got lots of pockets. You've got gussets at the hem. So with a longer jacket, there's a slight issue at times, which is that as you sit down, it can push up, it can tighten across the lap. What you really want are gussets up the hem so the jacket can splay a little bit. The jacket has a kidney belt. You've got high vis, high vis reflective components. You've got a removable neck collar. You've got level two D3O throughout the jacket, including in the back. You've even got Gore-Tex cuffs. This is one of the most comprehensive jackets of all time. It's also, it has to be said, one of the smartest looking technical jackets on the market because of course that's what Bell Stuff does. They know how to make stuff look good. But as a jacket, as an adventure jacket, it is just too heavy. It is no lightweight. And it's not the jacket that I think you'd want to be wearing on really any kind of adventure. But by contrast, it's a brilliant, brilliant touring jacket in just about every way. Of course, as it's a bell staff jacket, it is not inexpensive. You wouldn't expect it to be. And indeed at 1,250 pounds without any thermal, it is, as I've said, expensive. Now, this review is all about jackets, but what we need to point out with this particular jacket is that the pants are just not up to scratch. So if you're looking at a jacket, you're going to expect there to be a decent pant. And with all of our other reviews, we're barely going to mention the pants, but the pants that come with this jacket are not good enough. They come in one length only, and I'm afraid that lets the side down. The Mervic is another proper adventure jacket from the Swedish brand Helvarsons. And when we say proper adventure jacket, what we mean is has a removable waterproof liner. Technically, the jacket is branded Lindstrands, but Lindstrands is another name used by Helvarsons. The Lindstrands range is made in the same factory designed by the same people. So as far as we're concerned, it's still a Helvarsons. The jacket is pretty similar to another jacket produced by Halvarsons, that's the Moira jacket. And like the Moira jacket, you get a removable dry weight plus waterproof liner. In the shoulders and the elbows, you get level two armor. There's a pocket for a back protector, it doesn't come as standard. You've also got pockets here either side of the zip that will take a chest protector. You've also got on the shoulders and elbows, you've got 
layers here of super fabric. Super fabric is super strong stuff, very abrasion resistant, made up of ceramic balls. It's great stuff to have if you do go sliding down the road because it's very, it slides very easily and it's going to add another layer of protection. In terms of comfort on the bike, you've got stretch panels here that run around the shoulders, under the arms and down the back. It's going to make the jacket a little bit nicer to wear on the bike. The Moira has a thermal liner that is attached to the waterproof. So you remove one, you remove them both. With the Mirvik, the thermal can be removed from the waterproof liner. So if it's not particularly cold, you want waterproofing, but it's still fairly warm, then you can wear the waterproof without the thermal. You can't however wear the thermal without the waterproof. Here at the top, we've got a detachable neck collar. We've got adjusters here in the upper part of the sleeves, and we've got an adjuster around the waist, which as you know, we like to see on a slightly longer jacket. In terms of pockets, we've got these two lower flat pockets, adventure style, the two pockets here on the chest, and we've got a matte pocket across the back. Now, the vents are probably the weak point in this jacket, and we can't understand why Halvarsons has done this, because they've gone to the lengths of having a removable waterproof liner and what that means is it makes the jacket particularly good for flowing air but the venting on this jacket is in some ways rather poor we've got these two vents here which are vents that are on pockets so they're not going to be particularly accessible to, to the air they will work but they're not going to flow a huge amount of air here on the sleeves we've got vents at the lower part of the sleeves but there's nothing in the upper part of the arms there's nothing in the shoulders you do get an exhaust vent at the back of the jacket but Overall, we think the venting is at best average. At about 470 pounds, the jacket is pretty good value, but there is a problem with the matching pant. And the matching pant that goes with the Mirvik jacket is the Mirtorp trouser. And the problem with the Mirtorp trouser is that it only comes in one length. And that means that if you want to run this as a suit, matching top and bottom, it's a suit that's only going to work on about 60% of people. When manufacturers do this, when they produce a trouser in just one length, it always comes across to retailers as though they're penny pinching, as though they're trying to do what's easiest rather than what is right for the customer. And it's why, in truth, high-end retailers won't take this suit particularly seriously because why have a suit that is only going to be applicable to, say, six out of ten customers who come through it through the door? And that's a shame because in most other respects, the Mervic is a pretty good jacket. The Rucker Remo R is in some ways a lovely jacket. The construction, the chassis, it's a two layer Gore-Tex laminate construction. But the peat skin finish of the outer material is beautifully soft and it's gonna make this a very comfortable jacket to wear. But it's also gotta be said that the jacket is a bit of a hybrid. Because it's got a membrane, a laminate membrane, we would not, according to our definitions, term this a proper adventure jacket. But strangely, the jacket doesn't come with armor, so certainly we couldn't call it a touring jacket. The idea behind the Remo R is that you would often wear a body vest with maybe a chest and back protector and shoulder and elbow protectors underneath the jacket. But we don't think that if you're going to do that, that the Remo R would be the right jacket for it. If you're going to wear separate armor, that's normally for people who are doing serious off-roading. But if you are doing serious off-roading, you wouldn't want to wear a jacket with a membrane. Of course, you could take the pockets that the jacket comes with so that there are pockets in the shoulders and the elbows in the back and just put normal D3O armor if, if you wanted. And if you do this, then this becomes a very comfortable and extremely comfortable touring jacket. The fit is quite baggy because obviously Rucket intended this to be a bit more off-road. You've got lots of vents in the jacket as you would expect. So you've got two large vents on the chest. You've got vents here on the upper arms. You've got vents on the lower arms. You've got vents up the flanks, as you have with many rugger jackets, and you've got an exhaust vent across the back of the jacket. You've got expansion adjusters on the arms. You've got a great elasticated waist belt, and it is, it is a great belt because it actually gathers in with elastic at the back of the jacket. You've got areas of 3M reflective. You've got lots of pockets. You've got GTS, GTX cuffs and so on. 675 pounds, the jacket's not expensive, but of course you would then have to pay up to I think about another 110 pounds if you wanted to put D3O armor in the shoulders and the elbows. If you wanted a back protector, you'd be adding a, another 90 pounds. And even still, you've got no thermal liner. So this is an interesting jacket. We're not quite sure who it's aimed for at, but if it sounds like the kind of jacket that's gonna work for you, go for it.
Here at Motor Legends, our favorite motorcycle jacket over and above almost anything else is probably the Klim Marrakesh. It is the most comfortable jacket you'll ever wear. And because there's no lining, there's no membrane behind the outer chassis, it flows huge amounts of air. But when you supplement the Marrakesh with the right layers inside and out, it means that you can wear that jacket almost anywhere in the world, whatever the conditions. The Baja S4, this jacket, is pretty much the Marrakesh, but on steroids. The chassis is a mix of two fabrics. You've got all this lighter green stuff here. That's a thousand denier cordura with stretching. That's the same as you get on the Marrakesh. But that is interspersed with these panels here of a Schurler Dynatech mesh. And that mesh area, or these mesh areas, flow even more air than the ones that we find on the Marrakesh. You also, in terms of protection, you get super fabric on the Baja S4. You get super fabric here on the shoulders and the elbows. Like the Marrakesh, you've got D3O in the shoulders, elbows, and the back. On the Baja S4, that's traditional D3O armor, but now, from 2023, the Marrakesh comes with D3O ghost armor. So, in essence, the Baja S4 does the same job as the Marrakesh, but in the margin, one would have to concede that it's a bit more protective. And in the margin, one would also have to concede that it go is going to flow a little bit more air. So, what's the problem? Why do we prefer the Marrakesh? Because this sounds as though it's better than the Marrakesh. And yes, it is, on a functional level, a better jacket than the Marrakesh. But it's heavier, it looks less casual, it looks more like a bike jacket, which is not what you always want. And in the margin, again, it's not quite as comfortable. But as I've said, functionally, it is one level up. Of course, it's the same as the Marrakesh in that it's going to be brilliant on its own in hot weather, but in cold weather, you're going to freeze wearing the Baja S4. And if it rains, you're going to get wet in the Baja S4. So you're still gonna need all of the same layers that you would need to wear with the Marrakesh. In our view, of course, this is the way to go. Layering is the best way to go because it's going to give you the maximum amount of versatility. The Baja S4 costs £640, but what you should bear in mind is that there is no jacket on the market that flows as much air because every single panel of this jacket flows air. Personally, I still prefer the Marrakesh, but I've got to admit the Baja S4 is technically superior. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If you'd like to see more adventure jackets, you can visit motorlegends.com. Not that I think we have many more jackets other than those that we've spoken about today. If you'd like to learn more about any of the jackets, then if you click on one of the links on the screen, sometimes they're up there, sometimes they're down there, that will take you to a section that we've created for today's adventure jackets. Now, when you get to the site, you can check out the spec on these jackets in a little bit more detail. You can check on availability. And if you want to buy one of the jackets, you can do that obviously there and then. When you do buy from us, we try to make the process as simple, straightforward, and risk-free as we possibly can. There's no delivery charge on any item of protective wear that you buy from us. Returns are totally free, and what's more, we give you a full 12 months in which to decide whether you do want to return something to us. We have the best price promise in the business. Now, John Lewis is rightly famed for its, or was rightly famed rather, for its never, knew, never knowingly undersold price promise. We go one stage better. If you can find anyone selling anything that we sell at a price that is lower than ours, we will beat that competitor's price by a full 10%. Now, there are a few terms and conditions associated with what we call our price beat. Nothing particularly onerous, I can assure you. But if you are going to price beat us, I suggest you go over to the website and check out what those terms and conditions are. If in the future you would like to receive bulletins from us about new products, then if you go to the website, at the top of every page, there's a piece of script that says newsletter sign up. Click on there. Within seconds, you'll be in business. In future, you'll receive email bulletins from us. If, however, you would prefer to get your information video graphically, and that is to say in this form, we'd be simply delighted if you wanted to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel, and you can do that by clicking on the button below. Finally, I'd like to make mention of our fabulous little shop here at Moto Legends. We are based about a mile from the centre of Guildford, a mile from the railway station. And as I've said, it's a small shop, has a small footprint, but it's attached to our warehouse where we have more than four million pounds worth of merchandise arranged over three floors. Technically, that makes us the second largest motorcycle apparel shop in the UK. But we think that we are far more than just the amount of gear we have here in the building. We are all about service. We're all about personal fitting. If you want to check us out, visit Trustpilot. We have the highest five-star ranking in the business. And when you come to see us, we'll serve you only the finest Italian Illy coffee, or we'll serve you proper Yorkshire tea in a proper teapot. And who knows, if you're lucky, you might even get to sample one of our delicious motorcycle-shaped shortbread biscuits. Anyway, this has been Chris. I hope to talk to you again soon.